Israel is warning of a new era of its war with Hezbollah. He says it's underway amid a second wave of exploding devices in Lebanon overnight. The country's health ministry says at least 14 people have been killed and 450 injured after booby-trapped walkie-talkies blew up. Now that's a day after a dozen people, including children, were killed and thousands injured when pages detonated across the country. Our Middle East correspondent Alison Horn has more from Jerusalem. Yeah, it was just a few hours ago that this, these series of explosions started taking place again all across Lebanon. This time it appears to be in these handheld devices, uh, walkie-talkies is how we would probably refer to them, that have exploded um, all across Lebanon, including in the capital Beirut, causing mass panic among people and civilians there, harm to civilians. At least 12 people killed, 450 others injured. Uh, one of the blasts, we understand, actually happened at a funeral that had been organised by Hezbollah. For some of the people that had been killed in yesterday's series of explosions, where hundreds of Hezbollah pages were detonated, killing at least 12 people and injuring about 3,000 others. Israel hasn't specifically commented on these explosions. It hasn't uh, denied or t uh, taken responsibility. But as we spoke about yesterday, that's not unusual in these circumstances. Uh, Israel never really uh, talks about attacks that it has launched on foreign soil. But interestingly, after these explosions in the last few hours, we have had a succession of political, uh, political and military military leaders that have come out uh, with messaging that seems to suggest that Israel is ready, that it has the willingness and the readiness to increase fighting with Hezbollah. For example, uh, the army chief has said that uh, the country has now drawn up plans for additional action against Hezbollah and it is ready to strike. The defence minister has come out and declared a new phase of war with a focus now being diverted away from Gaza and into the northern areas of Israel where uh, <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of Israeli civilians have been evacuated from for nearly the last year. And similarly, on the other side of the border, there are so many civilians in Lebanon that have also had to evacuate their homes. Israel's Prime Minister has also come out, Benjamin Netanyahu, and said that he plans to have those evacuated residents from the north returned to their homes. So all of these messages have come out in quick succession in just the last few hours after these two attacks. It could really hinge now on what the response of Hezbollah will be. They have vowed a serious retaliation. We are expecting to hear from the leader of Hezbollah um, in the afternoon local time here on Thursday. That may give us some uh, indication of what kind of retaliatory response Hezbollah is planning, but certainly there are leaders here in the Middle East and further across the world that are seriously considering that this could now lead into an all-out war between Hezbollah and Israel. That's Alison Horn reporting for us there. A new report by the federal government's think tank has mapped out a map a path to accessible childcare, including making it free for families on lower incomes. Our political reporter Tom Lowry joins us now from Parliament House. Good morning, Tom. What sort of changes is the Productivity Commission suggesting? Yeah, good morning, Bridget. The task set to the Productivity Commission was to find a, a path for Australia towards this idea of universal childcare, that is, childcare that's accessible and affordable for all and the Productivity Commission wants to move Australia towards uh, providing three days of childcare uh, for all Australian children under five that is affordable and accessible. And it suggests three key things to move Australia down that path within the current sort of framework of childcare subsidies that we're already operating under. The three key changes are making childcare effectively free for households earning less than $80,000 a year through a 100% childcare subsidy. The second is lower costs for all households 
earning up to $580,000 a year. So that's all but the wealthiest households, again through higher subsidies. And finally, removing the activity test, which requires parents to be working or studying in order to access childcare. It says that that shouldn't be a requirement for families seeking to put their kids into early learning. Now, it did look at some bigger reforms that have been proposed by advocates in the past, things like a low flat fee for childcare or a universal 90% subsidy, but it found those bigger reforms would primarily benefit wealthier Australian families. It says the priority as the government moves down the path of childcare reform, which is indicating it plans to do before the election, should be to encourage children in lower income families into childcare to gain the benefits of early learning. And that's where that key recommendation comes from, making childcare effectively free for lower income households. And Tom, will this pressure the government to really look at additional reforms in this sector ahead of the next election, whenever that's going to be? Yeah, the government has been relatively open, saying it is looking at childcare as an area for reform to perhaps put together quite a significant election policy to take into uh, the next poll. And this could provide a little bit of a roadmap. It was the government that commissioned this report from the Productivity Commission, after all. And we've seen this in the past with reforms like the NDIS as well. That came out of a Productivity Commission report. Cost is going to be a big factor, however. These reforms alone would add about $5.5 billion to to the annual cost of childcare subsidies on the federal budget. That's no small amount of money to try and find within the budget's framework. Some advocates have called for more dramatic reform to again look at ideas like that low flat fee uh, for childcare, perhaps say set at $10 a day. Georgie Dent from The Parenthood says that is the best approach for childcare going forward. Here's a bit of what she had to say. The way to pay for this scale of reform is only if we get a significant uptake, uptick in parents' workforce participation. And it is clear that the way to do that is by radically addressing affordability while doing all of the things that the Productivity Commission has recommended around boosting the workforce, boosting the, the way that services are funded. So there will be some pressure on the government to still do even more than what the Productivity Commission is suggesting here. The government says it is looking closely at these ideas that are being put forward by the Productivity Commission and we can expect a response in the months ahead. Tom, thanks very much. To other news this morning, pregnant women across Australia could receive a free vaccine to protect their babies against the potentially dangerous illness RSV from next year. The Federal Health Minister, Mark Butler, says the government is close to finalising negotiations to add a subsidised RSV vaccine for pregnant women to the national immunisation schedule. Some states already offer free RSV vaccinations with more than 150,000 reported cases so far this year. The RFS is warning warm and windy conditions will cause extreme bushfire danger in Greater Sydney today. A total fire ban has been issued for the Greater Sydney and Illawarra Shoalhaven regions, with locals advised to remain on alert. The New South Wales government says it will support all 19 recommendations from a landmark inquiry into historical gay hate crimes. Last year's inquiry into suspicious deaths and unsolved murders spanning 40 years found a raft of failings by police in their dealings with the LGBTQI plus community. The re recommendations include fresh inquests for four cases and a review of all unsolved homicides. The cost of Hobart's AFL stadium has blown out by $60 million to at least $775 million in total. New details about the 23,000-seat stadium have been revealed in a development application to planning authorities. The Macquarie Point venue is a key requirement for the Tasmanian Devils footy team to enter the AFL in 2029. The US Federal Reserve has cut its interest rates for the first time in more than four years as US inflation eases. The central bank has lowered the target rate for its key lending rate by half a percentage point, with officials signalling that further cuts are likely before the end of the year. Inflation in the states has eased from a peak of more than 9% in 2022 to a three-year low in August. 
The Tupperware party is over with the US company behind the world famous food storage container brand filing for bankruptcy. Tupperware Brands has suffered mounting financial losses and a drop in demand reporting a fall in sales for six consecutive quarters since 2021. Tupperware became a household name throughout the 1950s and 60s for its Tupperware parties where women would sell their products at their homes. There you go. Yeah. Well done for Tupperware. Tupperware putting the lid on it.